Ever since it was revealed that Fenway Sports Group were assessing their Liverpool options last month, there have been plenty of scenarios presented. As first revealed by The Athletic, Liverpool owners FSG are open to selling their stake in the Reds, having been on the lookout for investment for more than a year, engaging the services of major US banks Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley to facilitate a deal. Mike Gordon, who's been the FSG top brass's closest ally to Jürgen Klopp during his time at Liverpool and the eyes and ears of the Reds in Boston, has passed off much of his day-to-day -day responsibilities with the club to Red CEO Billy Hogan, someone with a strong reputation within FSG, with Gordon tasked with leading the search for an investment or a potential for sale. The latest takeover links focus on a joint Saudi Arabia-Qatar bid, while a German consortium is also reported to be in the mix, along with interested American investors. The Liverpool Echo was told by well-placed sources that FSG were looking at £3.4 billion as a starting point for discussions, but that selling the club was by no means cut and dried. The owners testing the waters in the wake of the sale of Chelsea for £2.5 billion showing a buoyant market. Liverpool chairman Tom Werner told the Boston Globe recently that it was a case of business as usual for FSG's ownership of the club, the exploration of their options not necessarily pointing the way to a swift exit. Last week, the Globe, a newspaper owned privately by FSG chief and Liverpool principal owner John Henry, reported that sources that informed them that Liverpool owners were leaning more towards selling a partial stake in the Reds, capital that may be used to aid player re recruitment or capital improvements. But what might the sale of a partial stake in Liverpool look like and why might it appeal to some investors? Say for example, FSG sold 10% of Liverpool at a valuation of £3 billion. That's £300 million that represents them getting their money back that they paid to acquire Liverpool back in 2010. Yet they would be able to still keep control. The issue is that investors have no ability to control and in a vanity sport like football, that can be key. For some fans, the question has been, who would invest money to pay for transfers you have no say? Well, there are a number of investors in the sports market that don't seek ownership or control. They have a pool of capital that they put to work with the owners of those teams, spending that capital how they see fit. For the investors, usually private equity, they often invest on where they see the growth and whether or not those investors have the chance to accrete through the increase in valuation of those sports teams. Valuations continue to rise, but there's a view among some US investors that the Echo has spoken to that the growth will be slower, but still strong over the next few seasons. Football has been proven to be a tremendously resilient asset class despite economic pressures and a global pandemic.